For those of you who are wondering uh, where I get all these sounds from, I use a website called SoundSnap, which generously gave me all of the sounds for my short film. More about that at the end of the video. Today we're going to be talking about my latest short film, I Speak With No Voice, how I use sound effects and subtle composition of music to really create an eerie effect. <laughs> If you guys have not seen the short film, watch it, then dive into this, but we're gonna be talking a lot about sound effects, spoiling the movie for what it is. It's only five minutes, give it a gander, and then we'll really dive into the sound effects of this film. Now, the first thing is the movie was shot super duper independent. It was just myself and two others who created the film. It's one of the major jobs that was not on set was having a sound person, which if you guys are working on a movie is usually just as crucial as having a camera person. But sadly, I didn't have that on hand, so I knew a lot of the sound design was gonna be done in post-production. Actually, all of it was. The entire movie is completely done through ADR with very minimal raw audio coming from the camera. I basically used the raw audio as like a scratch track to build other sounds off of. Okay, slowly look back at the door. So we're gonna break down this video into different layers of sounds. The first one is environment, the world that your character is in. It's the same as being a, building a set or creating a color palette for your movie. Your sounds should sort of have a cohesiveness. So what I like to do is figure out what does this world sound like? So I wanted it to feel like it was by the ocean, so I downloaded a ton of sounds that were ocean-esque. Everything from seagulls, heavy waves splashing, thunderstorms crackling, giving it that sort of nautical vibe. Then I layer that into my video, creating just an ambient bass layer. Then I watch it with auditory eyes, which I have a whole video uh, through Premium Beat linked in the description below that dives into this much deeper, but essentially staring at the visuals and seeing what cues I can pull out of to build the ambience within the movie. Once I've created that, you can stretch this a little bit by adding sounds that don't belong. I don't like the idea that you have to add sounds that you see. In fact, I actually think sounds work basically with anything. So if, for example, a thunder crackle fits within the shot of fire cracking, you can throw that in. You were right. And as soon as you can disassociate from associating sounds that match, it really becomes super duper fun. But essentially, that is your first layer, is atmosphere and environment building. Once you've built out your environment, then it's time to start adding in things like fully and specific key sounds. And this dives into a little bit of environment. What does the space sound like? Now, our house that we shot the entire video in doesn't creak a whole lot, but it looks like it can creak. So I wanna make sure that every single footstep that this girl took throughout the movie had a sound attached to it because I think it builds up a lot of scariness. But the key element to this is to fade out and fade in sounds properly. You want the audience not to be focusing in on her footsteps if really you want them to be focusing in on what she's looking at. So what I do within this scene when she walks into the house is I make sure all of the sounds are very harsh. We're really brought into that environment and then I fade them out and fade into the things that I want the audience to listen to. So for example, when she walks in, the footsteps are very prominent. We can hear them, but then they start to fade away and we start to fade into the sound of the dog because that's more important. The nice thing about being in control and being in the driver's seat of your sound effects is you can play out what's important and what's not. So again, within this scene, every single footstep is fake. It's not real. I downloaded them off the website as well. And even to the sound of the dog breathing and panting, it was the most, I felt horrible. This shot specifically is not really that horrifying when you see the wide of it. But as soon as you add a little bit of a dog panting and a little bit of an ambient hum, 
it, it just feels uncomfortable. My next point is auditory insecurities. As filmmakers, our major insecurity, which you can tell through a lot of my pieces, is putting in music to guide the audience's experience. If I feel insecure about the scene and I feel like it doesn't have enough, I'll throw music into it and it guides the scenes. For example, this video. I have some music playing right now because it keeps you interested and it keeps you keen into what I'm talking about. If I were to remove it, then the whole video is relying on what I'm seeing, and hopefully I'm keeping your attention tight enough that we don't need music. But we're gonna throw music in because it just keeps it more upbeat and fun. But movies do this all the time. When a director or producer feels like the movie isn't giving you enough, we'll implement a score just to guide the audience. But sometimes the best scenes in movies actually play with no music and just play off of sound design. And I actually think my horror film, I Speak With No Voice, was an example of that. I really tried to make the entire film without any score or composition. I didn't want to guide the audience too much through music, rather sound design. So what I did was I used very simple auditory tracks, which are ambient hums that aren't too textured and aren't too flavored. And just to really guide this, let's watch the scene first with what we have originally. Now let's watch it with a little bit more textured score, but still within the horror genre. Now, as we compare the two, we can tell the first one feels a lot more natural and a lot scarier, while the second one feels like you're just kind of force feeding the message. And movies do this all the time. I actually think a lot of Hollywood films play out with too much score rather than too little. And I think a prime example of this is comparing a fight scene from The Dark Knight Rises to a fight scene from a Zack Snyder Batman movie. The two are fight scenes and they're really good fight scenes, but the one plays out with a lot of score while the other one plays out with just audio. <laughs> Now, I don't want this to discount music because I think music composition is incredibly important, but I think it loses its power and effect with too much of it. If you overuse it, you lose its positive effect, so I really wanted to just use music and auditory cues when it's needed. So at the very ending, when we do that big shock, or when we have just certain areas of just ambient hum, I think that adds to it a lot more. Now finally, let's get into the juicy stuff, the sounds of the monster. Now to create monster sound effects of a movie, it's always different. A lot of different people use different sounds to create that effect, but one that I found was super helpful was the sound of a seal. <laughs> That's right, I know. When I first heard the sound effect, I'm like, mm, I don't know, this sounds kind of ridiculous. But then I added some audio effects into my video, which uh, there's the sound effects from Maddie Hapoya. Uh, if you guys don't uh, have this, I think it's super duper valuable. It's one of the best presets that I've ever bought, not sponsored by Maddie Hapoya whatsoever. But essentially there was a preset on there called Monster, which then I dragged and dropped it over top of the sound of the sea lion, and all of a sudden it just had this like weird gurgle. <laughs> And then I applied that with a few other layers of scary sounds from a couple other monster-esque sound effects and then like some cracking and it created the sound effect for the movie. Which then I took this sound and replaced it over and over again by just sliding it and changing it a little bit to be the signature monster noise for the movie. So to create monstrous effects for the film, I layered sounds, I took off the website Sound Snap, and really was able to develop the horror-esque flavor that you see within the film. And finally, I did do a passive recording real sounds of the space. So I followed Sarah around with little Zoom H4n and basically played out the entire movie getting just sounds of her because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to find anything like that online. There are authentic sounds that just you'll never be able to get off a website, so if you can, bring out your cell phone, bring out your little external recorder and capture some of those raw audio sound effects. So her breathing, her footsteps, uh, her waking up in water, all of these things that are authentic to her, I recorded and then I was able to implement almost through, it's like ADR Foley. So automated dialogue replacement and a little bit of Foley action 
blended together and I was able to capture this vibe. I layered that upon all of the other layers that I created through grabbing sound effects off SoundSnap, and that was it. And to wrap up everything, I wanna thank the website SoundSnap for providing me with all these sound effects. A little bit of background on this website. For the longest time, um, I just sort of sourced out sounds over the years through multiple different sound effects websites, not really targeting the perfect one. But then the team from SoundSnap reached out to me and said, hey, would feel free to use our software and implement that into a video. And I said, okay, let me tinker with it, make a short film and I'll let you know what I think of it. And to be honest, it has been so, so amazing to use. Uh, if you guys are looking to up your sound effects game, I would highly recommend taking a look at SoundSnap. Again, every single sound effect, Foley, you name it, for the film outside of some of the ADR that I did was from this website. So if you guys want to step up your sound effect game, I, there was literally every single sound effect that I was looking for was on this website and you could just do a quick, easy search. But anyway, that's it guys. Um, more info about all that in the description below. Take a look at the short film and if you wanna know any of the key ingredients that I used to make that movie from the color grade to the sound effects, uh, link to all of those things are in the description below. If you guys are wanting to learn a little bit more about the industry standards of recording audio on your film and kind of tackling doing sound on set, I have a full part of my program in Pocket Film School that dives deeper into sound design, sound composition, adding in more different sound effects, the post-production, the production aspects of it, and even some of the pre-production, the gear, and uh, that is all part of our filmmaking start to finish course that comes along with cinematography class, color grading and DaVinci Resolve, how to edit, how to write, how to direct, how to compose music, and much, much more. More info about that in the description below. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this. My final goodbye. I love you. Keep making some great stuff and enjoy the program.